I was trapped within, within my body. My name's Rachel Bailey, I'm 22, and I was a fresher at Liverpool John Moores in 2014. I thought I was just, um, I had some, you know, pre-night out anxiety, um, or I felt a bit nervous because my hands and my toes kept tingling, um, and I just felt a bit weird, but obviously, you know, you think you're being dramatic, and I pushed through went on a night out and, you know, it was a good night out, but I had this kind of, I, I knew I didn't feel well, but I wasn't sure what it was. I had a new pair of heels on, and so I thought, well, that's probably why, you know, my feet are tingling. And towards the end of the night, my legs were just getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And um, I think I went home about 4 a.m. The next day I woke up and I thought it was just a really bad hangover. Worst, like, worst comes to worst, I'd, I'd trapped a nerve in my back. I had this really intense back pain and I spent the whole day lying down. I knew something wasn't right, but because I was 19, I was relatively healthy. I mean, I had been drinking the night before. I just assumed maybe, I, maybe I'd danced too much, maybe the shoes had just had hurt me. I didn't, I didn't think anything would be drastically wrong. I just thought, you know, I'll be fine. Tomorrow I'll wake up and I'll feel normal again. I was taken into the Queen's Medical Centre in Nottingham and they diagnosed me probably within about three hours with GBS. Guillain-Barre syndrome, a, a condition of the peripheral nervous system affecting the nerve roots, starts off usually in the hands and feet, spreads to the arms and legs and then gradually gets worse. It comes up the body so it can affect your breathing, swallowing, uh, everything and of course you don't know uh, to what uh, severity it's going to um, uh, it's going to develop in any individual person it affects about 1200 people a year so it's quite rare mm. uh, but pretty terrifying when you've got it the first time I felt scared was um, the doctors were on ward round and they kind of went through everything that had been going on and they were going through my med list and then they were like and the seizure I had no idea I'd had a seizure at that point. It's not something you remember. I'd been quite heavily sedated afterwards so that they could run tests because seizures and GBS aren't, that's not something that generally happens with the disorder. The nurses came running, um, shouting, we need some help in here. And this is my mum's 
this is what my mum said. Unfortunately, she witnessed the whole thing. Um, but she was at that point, you know, ferried away for them to start treatment and try and work out what was actually wrong with me. But that was the first, it was when I was told about that, that was the first time that I thought, oh my God. Now then, one day our next guest was out enjoying herself with friends. The next she became so ill that we suddenly left completely paralysed and unable to move, but in constant pain. Oh dear, Rachel has now made an amazing recovery, but the illness known as locked-in syndrome devastated her family and her mum, Karen, kept a very emotional diary as a reminder of those five months. Saturday, 1st of November, very weak, unable to use arms, breathing shallow. Sunday, 2nd of November, seizure. Rachel stopped breathing, sedated, I'm terrified. I'm not crying, but I feel like my world is ending. November the 11th, Rachel's birthday, lots of pain. Friday the 14th, Rachel's in agony all day, screaming inside for an hour and a half, but no voice, so couldn't be heard. Tuesday 25th of November, called in again, Rachel very, very, very upset, saying she can't cope, wants to die, can't do it anymore. And there I was with um, people having to speak for me. I couldn't even talk by myself. I couldn't ask questions. I was just stuck in a bed. People were having to roll me, people were having to dress me, people were having to clean me. And from having, you know, the most independence I'd ever had to having zero. I was basically like a newborn baby again. I couldn't do anything. And so psychologically, um, I struggled. I know I said on numerous occasions, put me to sleep, like just put me to sleep. I don't want to be here. Um, I don't think I ever wanted to die, but I certainly didn't want to be in my situation anymore. I was transferred to Linden Lodge, which is the neuro rehabilitation um, center that's, that's part of City Hospital. Uh, when I went to rehab, that's when my physiotherapy kind of got more intense. It was the most painful and just hard work I've ever had to do. And um, when I was in the rehab, I remember about three weeks in, uh, every time I'd seen my physio coming towards me, I'd burst into tears. Every time I saw the hoist, I'd burst into tears. And my physio came and sat with me and she was like, look, Rachel, you're not gonna get better and you're not gonna leave unless you start trying. And at this point, I hadn't, um, I hadn't really thought about it. She was like, all the pain that you're feeling is good pain. It's a sign that your body wants to work again. It's a sign that, you know, you need to push through it. And I'd been, I was so desperate to leave. All I wanted to do was go home. And that's when it clicked, like, I need to, I need to get over this pain. I need to just, like, crack on. Um, and I think it was from two months after that that I ended up leaving and I walked out. Um, up until that point, I was barely sitting up because every time they moved me, I would just freeze in pain and I'd scream and scream and scream and scream. And they had, you know, obviously they had other patients, but I was quite difficult. I was, I was a diva, but um, it was that moment in rehab that made me realize, you know, this is the only reason, this is the only way I'm gonna leave. This is the only way I'm gonna get better is I, if I actually start trying. important to find happiness from like small achievements like now if I paint my nails and they look really good I'm literally like oh, I'm amazing um, like I'm really really pleased with myself so being able to get up and walk is wonderful being able to like catch the bus by myself and walk and uh, breathe by myself having a trackie isn't nice um, so like I appreciate those tiny things that everyone takes for granted 